it's nine o'clock and a beautiful morning here in Lexington, Kentucky. Welcome very much, uh, very warmly to all of you who are joining us, whether you're here in Kentucky or you're um, somewhere else in the United States or you're around the world. We're very honored to have you be with us this morning. We have an event ready for you that is aimed at um, sharing information with you and addressing questions that you may have um, about how the university is responding um, to take care of its students, especially scholars, faculty and staff during this difficult time. We want you to know above all that we care about our international students and scholars and that we are um, ready to listen to your concerns and to respond as best we're able. We're in very difficult times right now. Everybody is facing a lot of challenges, um, but we're um, excited about the future and we're here ready to support your success as we navigate these waters together. So this morning, we will hear from uh, the University of Kentucky's president and the University of Kentucky's provost about their thoughts on the current situation. And then we will hear from Elizabeth Leibach, who many of you know is the director of our international student and scholar services team here at UK in the International Center. Um, and then we will open uh, the event to a question and answer format, an open forum. And you may ask questions at any time using the Q&A functions, which are at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're joining us from Facebook Live, we welcome you too. And you can ask questions by posting a comment in the comments feature on Facebook. And that will, those questions will be then transferred to the Zoom site so uh, our panelists will res can respond to them. If somebody asks a question that you like, that you think is a great question, you can give it a thumbs up if you're on Zoom using the thumbs up feature in the Q&A function on Zoom. Um, if you ask a question that we don't get to because of time constraints, please be assured that we will answer your question uh, after the event. And that is one reason why we are recording this event. So please know that we are recording this event in order to help us respond fully to everybody's questions. Um, and please, just a ground rule for the event, we'll ask questions that are constructive and polite. Um, and so please just be aware of being, um, being constructive in your, in your uh, Q&A questions. Um, you've already been asked a couple of questions using the poll feature on Zoom, those of you who are watching on Zoom. And um, it's interesting to see that we have a bunch of people who are here in Lexington, um, but also some folks um, overseas. So welcome to everybody. So the first thing I will do is I will introduce the president. Um, he will make some remarks. Then we will hear from Provost Blackwell then from Elizabeth Leibach, and then we will have the Q&A section. And I will act as moderator in that uh, event and direct the questions to the panelist who seems um, best suited to address the concerns. So um, it is my pleasure this morning to introduce to you all President Capilouto. You probably know him well anyway, uh, but he is UK's 12th president. He has been leading our university since 2011 and doing a fantastic job of catalyzing a great period of growth and investment in the university. Um, and we're so pleased that he is steering the ship uh, through these current turbulent waters. So I'm going to turn the podium, as it were, over to President Capilouto. Uh, thank you, Dr. Roberts. I would be remiss if I first didn't salute uh, Dr. Roberts and her incredible team. In such a difficult time, I've had the opportunity to witness firsthand their deep uh, commitment uh, to the health, welfare, and well-being of all our students, especially our international students. I have watched them work 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, to ensure this commitment. So Sue and your team, we thank you. Uh, and I'm excited to be able to connect, albeit in a very different way from all of you. I loved looking at the poll results to see that uh, 
Many of you are here in Lexington, but some of you have returned to your home country. Uh, we miss seeing you on our campus each and every day. All of you know the difficult circumstances we face. At this time, we probably know sort of more with more confidence uh, that the health of each individual we know uh, affects the health of everyone around the world. It reminds us of how connected we are. And I think that connectedness is what is gonna get us through this difficult time. All of you are an essential part of the UK community. Uh, we're an incredibly uh, diverse and, and globally connected uh, campus. Our students, faculty, and staff, they have different backgrounds and identities, and they come from many places around the world. And every one of you, and every one of these individuals makes richer this Wildcat family. It's an essential part of who we are and what we do every day to best serve our Commonwealth, con country, and the world. This rich tapestry of uh, experiences and perspectives makes this campus strong. So thank you for all being a part of that. Your health, safety, and wellness is a top priority. Uh, I've seen that every day when we meet as a team. Uh, you're at the top of our list in terms of your safety and wellness. We want to do everything to support you uh, here in Kentucky and communities and homes around the world. And for those of you whose families have been affected by this virus, our hearts uh, go out to you. We are fortunate at the University of Kentucky, we have a nationally ranked uh, medical center uh, with an incredible Department of Infectious Diseases. And they are working these issues day and night, uh, partnering with experts here in the state and around the world to combat this virus. And it's also been terrific to see our researchers who have been galvanized um, to work together. They're moving very quickly looking for those solutions that can stop the spread of this virus. We have an elaborate way we deal with challenges like this. Uh, don't have time to explain it entirely, but we have work groups to address the different issues that we face. Those work groups work independently, but in a collaborative and coordinated way when necessary. So they can address academic issues, uh, advising, dining, housing, technology, student success, you name it. And we also have a specialized work group that focuses on entirely on the international aspects of our response. And I have to again salute Sue Roberts and her team for the efforts there. A major concern of our well-being is uh, the well-being of our entire campus certainly starts with our international students and scholars. We recognize it's difficult to be far away from home and those things that are most familiar in a challenging time like this. Uh, but we want to work with you to give you the support you need uh, to navigate this difficult time. And thanks to Sue and her team and an entire campus that is curious uh, with care and concern, we understand that there are cultural differences. We all come with different perspectives about how we may view our community and how we view a response to this virus. So through those partnerships and bridging our differences, um, we feel that with more confidence uh, that those differences will help us work together to navigate this. And we all know that where someone comes from, um, what they may call their home country, wherever, ever, they or their families may call home, this virus does not discriminate. It affects everyone equally. It cannot be attributed to any one group, identity, culture, or ethnicity. So now as always, we're gonna honor our differences, remembering that diversity and inclusion are at the heart of what the University of Kentucky does. 
the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I'm proud to be a citizen uh, during this time because our state government led by our governor has been very proactive. I think we are among those states that acted uh, most strongly and earliest when it came to this virus. And I think some of the models we have today uh, illustrate our success. You know, we wanted to flatten the curve, as it said, and it looks like uh, we're having success in doing that. The next few weeks, I feel, I will further document that we have slowed, not entirely stopped this virus, and saved lives. Governor Andy Bashir is working with health, health experts on this campus uh, around our state to mitigate your risk, the entire community's risk. We all are aware of the social distancing we're practicing, and it's difficult, but the non-essential businesses have closed. Our UK hospital, as we flatten the curve, they built their capacity to accept a possible surge in cases. So everyone who would have had to turn to us, uh, so especially if they were suffering from the severe consequences of this disease, uh, could be treated with a very uh, best of care, uh, not lacking any kind of equipment that one would need to treat an individual. We wanted to be certain if that capacity surged uh, that we would have additional beds. So we transformed an athletic training facility into space for 400 additional beds or patients uh, should that be needed. So that's the kind of extra effort you'll find here at the University of Kentucky. And I've been gratified. I hope some of you read UK Now, uh, I think yesterday's edition, uh, to learn how our Chinese partners uh, have assisted us in so many ways, especially in locating personal protection equipment that gives our healthcare providers um, that security they need to best treat uh, patients. So uh, this is a time for all of us to come together. I appreciate your support uh, of one another. And uh, something I like to say often and during this crisis, I get to say with even more passion and confidence, everyone who turns to the University of Kentucky, whether to heal or to learn, is deemed infinitely worthy. And we're going to give everyone an equal opportunity uh, to succeed, regardless of who they are or where they are from. Thank you, thank you uh, for making this a, a rich community uh, in, in goodness and diversity and perspective. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much, President Capaludo, for your eloquent words, uh, much appreciated now, um, especially. Um, it is now my pleasure to introduce our next uh, guest to uh, welcome you to this event and give his uh, thoughts. And this is Provost David Blackwell. Provost Blackwell is the Chief Academic Officer of the University of Kentucky. And he became Provost after serving many years successfully as the Dean of the Gatton School of Business and Economics. Um, and he's also a very busy person right now, so we are very grateful to him for um, taking the time to offer his remarks this morning. Provost Blackwell. Thank you, Dr. Capilouto, Dr. Roberts, thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Roberts, I just wanna echo uh, what President Capilou mentioned about you and your team, uh, all of you do. And uh, Sue, to you, I uh, appreciate your, your support on, on everything we're trying to do on campus and especially for international students. So thank you all. And uh, thank you, Dr. Capilouto, for your words and, and for your, your great leadership through what is a, a trying time for all of us. I'm really excited. I was really excited when I got the invitation to participate in, in this forum. And, I really do appreciate the opportunity, and I just want to wish health and safety to everyone who's joining us, uh, both locally in the U.S., but around the world. As President Capilouto mentioned, we are a major U.S. public university, and, and because of that, we attract students and scholars from all over the world. 
And we are very proud that you have chosen us as a home away from home. You represent more than 100 countries and you definitely uh, add, add to the knowledge and experiences of our campus. You contribute diverse perspectives, fresh ideas, our classrooms, our labs, and our studios, and you make our university stronger and more vibrant. Thank you for being here. We also recognize it is a big decision to move to another country, continue your studies in a, in a second language. It takes a lot of courage. We recognize also that COVID-19 has made being far from your loved ones and your families even tougher than normal and we know this is a hard time for you. And this is, this is why uh, what we are having this forum to hear your voices and we can find out through this forum how we can support you better and we, we, we will do that. As we've made decisions about how best to keep our students, faculty and staff healthy and safe during the pandemic, we're also committed to keeping our students learning faculty and your support services. And, and you should know that, that all of these transitions that, that we've had to make are with your health and safety in mind. And that is the paramount concern of, of the University of Kentucky. Your health and safety, the health and safety of our faculty and staff. And, and you know, by our actions, we've actually contributed to the health and safety of our entire community. So we, we just want you to know that that's been the number one priority. We've adjusted our academic calendar to help with the transition to online classes. We've extended the, uh, the withdrawal deadline, and we've uh, allowed you to change courses in, in many cases to pass fail uh, until May the 1st. We've also transitioned our academic support services uh, advising, and those are available in an online format as well. That has been a uh, incredible challenge, but our, 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 all of our teams have worked very well to make those services available. I hope you're taking advantage of them as you need. And we're still offering tutoring and writing services. I know those are important, uh, especially the writing assistance for, for international students and scholars. And if you need those services, they're available for one-on-one -on -one consultations. And you can visit a, a new landing page that we have that will guide you to all of those services. It's called learnanywhere.uky.edu. That's learnanywhere.uky.edu. We want you especially to connect with your faculty. If you encounter issues or challenges to attending class due to time differences, uh, due to any kind of circumstance uh, related to technology, we ask you to contact International Student and Scholar Services and, the, and they, will, they will guide you. And we know technology can be challenging during this time. So we are working very hard to make sure that every student that needs it has the technology they need to access the internet, access their classes, and access our support services. If you have a need, or technology that is not met, you can also find a way to get help there through learnanywhere.uky.edu. All you have to do is submit a request online and then someone will contact you to, to figure out what, what you need. As I think all of us have known, we're, we're working remotely. We don't have as much contact with uh, friends and colleagues uh, as we normally would. And it's quite stressful. It's quite stressful to feel the isolation. And I can only imagine that's even more challenging when uh, your, your home country might be a, a, an ocean away or, or 12 time zones away. So you, you really need to focus on, your ma on maintaining your mental well-being, your physical well-being, your self-care. And we want to help you through that. Our counseling center is still providing services. So please reach out to them uh, virtually if you, if you need uh, guidance. For students that are still in Lexington, we have the Big Blue Pantry that is still operating. They offer a grab and go food option for any student in need, no cost, no questions asked. Students on assistantships, 
should continue to work assignments as best as possible. Are very concerned about about how you're able to conduct that work, and certainly uh, they they continue to need support. And as many of you are probably teaching classes, those students need your support. So we just ask you to to do your, do your very best to stay engaged with your with your colleagues, your supervisors, and your students uh, remotely, of course, as 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 much as possible. That's that's very important to us succeeding in our mission, even under these circumstances. The um, it's especially important now because we don't see each other every day face to face in the office that you communicate regularly with your supervisors, your advisors, for those of you that are teaching, uh, stay in communication with your students. Uh, for graduate students, the graduate school is a good source for updates on, on what's going on. Stay in touch with the graduate school as well. Uh, I think more communication at a time like this is really helpful to us continuing to move forward on all of our missions and to support each other. So more communication is better. I, I hope you know, given, given what President Capilouto has told us, what you're about to hear uh, from the International Center and uh, about how much we care about your, your health and safety and well-being, but also how much we care about you achieving your academic goals, achieving learning objectives and your academic programs. Uh, being able at some point to continue your research in a, in a normal fashion. We, we, are, we are doing our level best, and, and the, uh, the president mentioned the, the great efforts of our, of our state and, and Governor Bashir in, in flattening the curve. And uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that very soon we'll have a, we'll have a plan for how, how we transition uh, going forward. In the meantime, um, know that we are committed to your success, our students, are the center of everything we do at the University of Kentucky, and you're why we are here. So please reach out, let us know if we can help, let us know if we can do more to support you during this challenging time. I thank you all for, um, for being here this morning, and I look forward to hearing from the International Center and then hearing your, your questions. Thank you, Sue. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Provost Blackwell. That's some very meaningful um, and heartfelt sentiments, and, and we are so glad to have you leading us um, as provost during this time. Um, it is now time to hear from Elizabeth Leibach. Elizabeth Leibach works in the International Center. That's, her office is usually in Bradley Hall, the building with the flags that many of you have been to, I'm sure. And Elizabeth directs the International Student and Scholar Services team there. And her uh, assistant in that work is Karen Slaymaker. And Karen is also, you may see her on the screen as well. Um, but I'll turn the, the podium now over to my colleague, Elizabeth Leibach, to make some remarks on behalf of the International Center. Thank you, Sue. And also thank you, um, Provost Blackwell and President Capilouto for joining us today. Um, we're excited that you have been able to be here and to help speak to the students today. And my colleagues and I in ISSS want to convey our gratitude to everyone who's participating, but especially also our international students, scholars, and their families. And we in ISSS are proud to serve this international community. We do appreciate the ways that you impact our campus, our community, and our world. And we want you to know that we do recognize the talents and aspirations of being successful students and scholars on our campus. And to that end, we want to continue to help you achieve your academic goals, even though we are in this unprecedented crisis. And we do want to continue our work supporting our international community, and we are continuing more easily than ever because of Zoom meetings. And we want you to know that we also are continuing individual communication channels of email, phone, and our international portal, ICAT. And IISS monitors and communicates all major immigration and related uh, government updates. So just about every day, we're all searching for what's happening, what's new, what do we need to be thinking about. 
And these address, uh, issues, many of them are addressed in our FAQ, which is on the main landing page of our website. It's international.uky.edu forward slash IFSS FAQ. And we are updating this page constantly as we learn about any kind of changes and maybe even some questions that you have asked us, we end up putting on the FAQ. But today we do wanna learn more about your concerns and questions so we can continue to advocate for your needs around campus. So therefore it is our privilege today to hear from you during this open forum and we invite your comments and your questions today. And in this forum today, there are many members of the IEEE team that are a part of it. And most, but most of the questions will be answered by either myself or Karen Slaymaker, who you know is a strong advocate for international students at UK. So we look forward to hearing from you today and learning how we can better help you. Karen, would you like to say a quick hello to our participants today? Yes, I'd just love to say um, thank you for joining us and I want you to know, just as Elizabeth has stated, we are still here. We are still your support, your um, advocate on campus. So please ask us lots of questions. If we don't get to all the questions today, we promise to respond to you personally. Very good. Um, well, I hope to all of you attending this event that you um, feel that you are getting the full attention of the university um, every day but especially now is your time to ask questions that may be on your mind. Um, you can do that again through the Q&A function in Zoom. Um, and I see we have a lot of questions popping up through that already. And you may also do it by posting a comment on Facebook Live and then the staff will take that comment and repost it on the Zoom site so that I may see it um, and direct it to the panelist who's best suited to address your questions. So you may also Give a thumbs up if you like a question that you see in the Q&A section and that will make that question rise up as it were to the top of the queue. So that's how that the Q&A function works for us here today. So let us now transition then to the open forum part of this event and uh, we have a few questions already so uh, we'll get started with those. I will read the questions because I don't think that the people on Facebook Live can see them. So I will read them and then they will also be with the answers on the recording. So the first question that has a lot of thumbs up, it has six in fact, is from an anonymous attendee. And this person states, I am a graduate assistant and receive a stipend from August to May. In the summers, I usually work on campus in temporary positions to get myself through the summer before my stipend kicks back in in August. I've been doing this for the last six summers, but I know UK has a hiring freeze at the moment and I'm worried about finding employment. As an international student, I am only authorized to work on campus. And then the person asks, could this restriction be temporarily lifted to allow us to work off campus this summer? If not, what is UK doing to support international students who are out of a job and unable to go home this summer? So this is a question that I'm going to direct in the first instance to Elizabeth to address um, because it contains some reference to immigration rules. Elizabeth? Yeah, sure. And I wanna let this student know and all students on the call today that we have been thinking about students who um, potentially have lost their on-campus um, jobs um, due to um, the fact of, of the current COVID-19 crisis. And we have been gathering some data with HR and also the Dean of Students. And actually we have either a meeting either later today or tomorrow on my calendar um, to start to review um, students in that situation to see what can be done to encourage more remote working um, options um, or see what other opportunities might be available to us. Um, so that that is something that has been in our minds. But I do want to remind all students to, um, I think this student mentioned the clerical work as a temporary job. If that was through steps, um, that is probably why that's not available, but student employment is still, if it is a student job, um, 
that has not been paused. That is still continuing. So if they're, um, when you're, you know, looking on the HR website, just be aware that student employment is still going to continue to be available um, to students. Now we know that the availability is less than it and then it has been. Um, and that's why we have been gathering data and trying to meet with the Dean of Students and HR to see what we can do to encourage more on-campus employment. Um, and one good thing is immigration has been on our side in this area and they have clearly said it can be remote working, that is allowed to be remote working. So that that's really a, um, a good, a positive. So now we just need to find ways to make more opportunities for students to have uh, on-campus student employment. Thank you. And I think the person also said, could the restriction to work only on campus be temporarily lifted? But that is a federal government rule. Is that correct, Elizabeth? So that's not something the university can control. Yes, we can. Um, to work off campus, can't we don't have the authority to do that. Um, and every day we keep hoping that that might be something our government um, would consider. And I will just tell you that we're part of an organization nationwide, universities nationwide are advocating for these, for that specific need. Um, so we've asked. Um, and now we wait and hope that uh, we might get that. But as a, but we at the university don't have the authority to just waive that um, off campus employment. Thank you, Elizabeth. And just to clarify the remote working then, that would be remote employment by the University of Kentucky. Yes. That doesn't mean yes. any job in Lexington That's or elsewhere. Exactly. That means remote yes. working in positions. Yes. And by the yeah, thanks for yeah, making sure people understand that and that and even immigration clarified that it's for a norm what would normally be an approvable on campus job under normal circumstances with immigration. It's just that that particular job then go is allowed to be remote. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for that comprehensive answer, Elizabeth. Um, the next question is from Kion Wong who asks Many states have announced that they will close the school until the end of this year, not only this semester. What is the policy of UK? I will uh, ask Provost Blackwell to respond to this question, but before I do, it's important to know that UK isn't closed. We may not have on-campus activities, but the university is full steam ahead for the education of, of the students. Um, so Provost Blackwell, would you like to answer this person's question? Uh, certainly, Dr. Roberts, thank you. And uh, it, it's an excellent question. We know there is a lot of uncertainty out there uh, regarding when we resume uh, the, you know, our new normal operations, and uh, that's still, still uncertain. Uh, we have already announced a transition to online uh, courses in the summer, and, and uh, we presumably will be for, for some months ahead or some weeks ahead, uh, continuing to work remotely. With respect to the fall, it's, it's still entirely too early to tell. Um, every, every state has, a, has a, had a different response to the, to the COVID pandemic. Um, you know, the curve, if you will, flattens at different times and peaks at different times in, in different states. And, and so we, we are, we are not ready to predict anything yet about the fall. Uh, we anticipate a, a robust operation in the fall, yet we will uh, have contingencies in the event that, um, in the event that we are not able for some reason to resume normal operations in the fall. And uh, I think uh, the president uh, mentioned that we have uh, what we call an emergency opera operations center that's, that's uh, working all the time. We have 19 different work streams covering every facet of the university, including academic course delivery, including international operations. And, and uh, now that we have established a field hospital and have begun our transition uh, for online courses in the summer, those groups are going to start thinking about 
the you know the what if scenarios, if you will, for uh, for fall. But we're hopeful that we will uh, be back to as close as normal as possible in the fall. And I might ask if uh, President Capilouto wants to add comment there. No, Provost Bell, I think you've done uh, an excellent job at answering that question. And uh, I am encouraged to see uh, across really the world and uh, states throughout our country, uh, thoughtful efforts on uh, how we could effectively uh, roll into uh, a sort of startup in, in different phases. And, I think all of us are learning from this. Uh, good testing, good communication, good surveillance systems. Uh, those are the kinds of things we need. Uh, I'm encouraged uh, by the efforts I've seen in other countries uh, that have successfully uh, been able to open their doors. And, and I think there are lots of lessons for the United States in this. Thank you both for your thoughtful answers to that uh, that question. It's on everybody's mind, and it's a very it's a very a tough set of decisions. Um, okay, the next question uh, in the Q and A stream is from uh, Sanjay Joshi, who says, "I have a question regarding my J one visa extension. Currently, I am a J one visiting scholar in the Department of Plant and Soil Sciences." from 2018. My visa will expire May 15th. My grace period will end July 15th. I'm interested to extend my visa from another department. Will extension be approved from provost office or do I need to prepare for an alternative? So this is a visa question. So I'm going to pass this to uh, Elizabeth to answer. Hi, Sanjay. Uh, yes, the, for extensions, there hasn't been any uh, change for people who are currently um, on our campus, continuing to do um, work on our campus. And um, I have been in contact with um, the faculty affairs office that would be the, um, part of the provost unit to approve those extensions. And it is my understanding that uh, for anybody who's current um, working on our campus can request an extension. The only thing I would caution you is to, I, I don't know what your limit is on your J1, uh, but just be aware it's a five year limit. Um, hopefully you're not close to that um, for the J1 research scholar um, category and, um, you know, for, for the visa and no, and the university can't um, doesn't have any control over whether the government will extend beyond five years. But as long as you're within that five years um, and your department, it sounds like you're wanting to transfer to a different department, but it's still UK, still University of Kentucky. So I don't see any um, concerns or issues, but I would ask Sanjay if you would um, write to me specifically and I'll kind of, I will help you kind of navigate that if uh, there's any concerns about whether or not that'll be understood. Very good, thank you. Um, and I'm guessing from the number of thumbs up that Sanjay's question received that there are others with that concern. So I might suggest that you also consider sending Elizabeth an email and she can discuss with you one-on-one -on -one your particular situation. But it's very good to be thinking about these things ahead of time. So. Thank you for raising that question, Sanjay. Okay, the next question we have in the Q&A uh, feed here is from Julia Schultz. And Julia asks, will there be visa extensions for graduate students that might not graduate on time due to COVID-19? We're currently not able to work in our labs and that might set us back in our lab work and it might change graduation timelines. Again, I think this is perhaps for Elizabeth and uh, maybe the provost might want to weigh in, but how about Elizabeth uh, starting us off? Sure, thank you, Julia. Um, that's a very good question and we have already been discussing that in our meetings. Um, so the good news is there's always been a regulatory um, allowance for extensions and I, and I wanna assume, Julia, you mean for the F1, um, yeah, because you said you're a graduate student, so you're on an F-1 visa. In the regulations for the F-1 visa, it does allow for circumstances beyond the control of the student. 
and there's no better time to say that that has been met than now. So um, we all discussed that COVID-19 is definitely a reason for extending the F1 status. So no problem there. Provost Blackwell, did you want to add anything to Elizabeth's comments? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, and I, I just want to assure everyone uh, who is listening, and especially graduate students who are, are uh, engaged in research and labs, and uh, e even for those that may be supported on a grant uh, with the faculty member that they're working with, I know that uh, the vice president for research is uh, planning diligently for how, how we can continue our work as best as possible through, through this, this, uh, this period. Um, it is very thorny because we have to practice social distancing. Um, and so, you know, all essential, all, all, only essential research is going on right now. And that involves uh, largely research into uh, the uh, response to the COVID, the COVID pandemic. Um, I think that our, our faculty in, in a number of ways have exhibited extraordinary flexibility in this time. And, and I, I trust our faculty to have the uh, compassion to work with all of our students, but especially our graduate students who are in, you know, in the research mode right now to facilitate continuing their studies. And I'm happy to hear that this is a circumstance that would allow you to extend, extend your visa. Very good, thank you. Well, we have a lot of questions lined up, so I'm going to move straight ahead to the next one. I'm not sure we can address this fully, but the person asks, um, if I am a research assistant now and not anymore in the fall, if the university can't, cannot hire TAs anymore, how could, I be, uh, how could I continue to be funded as a PhD student? Um, Elizabeth, would you want to address this one quickly? Yes, um, I think for, uh, the research assistants and the TA positions, um, as you know, that they're temporarily uh, a pause on that. Um, so we've been in contact with the grad school about um, what student, you know, who, students who may be concerned about that. But if you are a continuing um, research assistant, I, I don't see any reason why you can't continue in your current um, position, if, and I think that's what you're asking. If I'm a research assistant now, but if you lost it in the fall, and then if the university can't hire any more new, is what your I think the question is, and that um, we may need to think a little bit more about that one to make sure that I'm really getting at it. Um, so that one I might need to do a little bit more research. It's a scenario, that, you know, like if this happens, then. Um, but I, it seems as though for continuing students, at least, um, there, there is no pause for anybody who currently has um, a research assistantship. But I understand like what you're asking, what if, if I lose it, would you be counted as a new hire? It seems like what you may be asking. So we may wanna try to address that one at, with the grad school and with the provost help um, to figure out those situations, if they if they occur, what um, would be um, the options? Yes, thank you, um, Provost Blackwell. Anything to add to that? Yes, uh, thank thank you, Elizabeth. And that was a, a very thoughtful answer. And um, again, not it. It sounds like this may be a, a definitely a what if scenario. But I, I thought for the rest of the uh, participants in the in the forum. I would clarify that uh, the, the pause on, on new uh, uh, graduate assistance is, is really only applied to uh, those that have not yet been offered. So if there was already an offer out to a graduate student for an assistantship next fall, that, that will be honored. And certainly uh, anyone who is currently in a, in a graduate assistantship and in the midst of their program that will be honored. So we, we just put the pause on uh, new offers going out. And the, the reason for that is we're, we're still looking at our 
uh, financial situation given the pandemic, and we just we just need a little time to see how that's going to evolve. And and certainly we we called it a pause uh, rather than a freeze because we we are committed to accelerating out of this pandemic uh, situation into uh, you know into greater things for UK, and certainly our graduate students are a big part of that and what they contribute in, in terms of research and teaching is, is very important to us. And, uh, and so just know that um, that pause was very specific and, and doesn't apply if you were already on campus. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is uh, from uh, Tony Butera. And Tony says that um, he is, or he or she is facing financial instability due to the inability to work and receive money from home country Rwanda because it is in lockdown. So I think maybe Karen Slaymaker could address this question for us. Well, to know that, you know, like a question previous asking about working off campus at this point, the only way that can happen is through curricular practical training or optional practical training, or also uh, applying for um, economic hardship and encourage you to be in touch with one of the immigration specialists. You can email isss at uky.edu about the process if you're going to apply for economic hardship. Um, but we also have reporting, you know, connecting with our basic needs committee, so community of concern. So please make sure that we're connecting you with that group um, who is looking at uh, some fundraising had been done by the Alumni Association, and I know they've reached over $70,000 in, in our basic needs campaign. So please be connecting with us and we'll get you connected with Community of Concern. Yes, thank you, Karen. It's important to note that as international students, you are eligible for the exact uh, same fund, uh, kind of uh, emergency funds. Um, that the that the university has. There may be some other funds you're not eligible for, but in terms of the university funds, uh, they are also for you. So to be put in touch with the right person, um, I suggest you email the address that Karen just gave. That's isss at uky.edu. Okay, um, the next question, it says, I and many of the international students around me wanted to go back to our country in summer break but we're worried that we wouldn't be able to return to the United States when the fall semester starts. A very good question. Um, I think I will ask Elizabeth to address that, please. Yes, this is a very good question and it is something um, that I know is on many of your minds. Um, and as you go out for the summer break, I think the main thing is to, uh, as of now, to be aware that there are a few countries that have a travel ban that as of now would not permit you to return to the United States. So as of now, that's uh, China, Iran, and um, Europe, um, Ireland, and the United Kingdom. So those are the countries where if you travel there, you won't be able to come back unless the government lifts the restriction on that. So you just need to be aware of that. If you're not from one of those countries, but you're still concerned about things like flights and um, because we know that a lot of uh, airlines have canceled flights to countries. Um, most of it has been uh, through the spring and giving deadlines like at the end of April and some of them in May. And so you don't know when it comes time to July and August what the situation is going to be. So what I would say to you is that we are monitoring it. And if we have information that will help you make a decision, um, that's something that maybe other people um, would also need to, to know about, we'll let you know um, if we have any of that information. Unfortunately, we don't have any more information than you have. Um, I wish we all had a crystal ball and could know what is going to happen in the future. Um, and I, we recognize that it's a very hard decision that you have to make. Um, and there is definitely a risk involved in you making that decision. Um, and so the thing that we've told students is just be checking with your own governments um, and policies 
um, we'll let you know about any U.S. policies and your own government if we are aware of them um, and just try to make the best decision that you can with the information that you have. Um, and that I think in this time, that's the best that we can that we can really be doing. But we will let you know if there is something we find out that will be helpful. Thank you very much. I know there are some other questions further down the Q&A that are very similar. So I know it's on a lot of uh, people's minds, this question about uh, travel over the summer and return to the United States. Okay, moving along, because we have um, quite a few questions here. We have another question that's asking about assistantships. Um, somebody seeking graduate assistantships from, uh, for the fall but knowing that there's a hiring pause and worried because they don't see assistantship opportunities being posted. Um, and there seems to be little chance of finding a job or no chance of finding a job during the summer, this person writes. Who can this person uh, look to for um, assistantships? Elizabeth, would you like to address that one as well? Yes, and I, I would just reiterate what Provost Blackwell said is that, um, that at University of Kentucky, we've seen it as a pause so that we can um, uh, review and see where our way forward will be. Um, but at this time, yes, there, there, you won't find any assistantships um, probably being posted that are new. Um, but I would say that if that is lifted or changes, then we can, we can let you know um, so that you can you can be looking for those. Okay, very good. Um, the next question is on a different topic. Are Isabella de Assis Rocha asks, whoops, her question just disappeared from me. Okay, are F1 graduate students who file taxes for 2019 going to receive the stimulus check from the government? That's a very good question and we have gotten that question already quite a lot. It is on our FAQ, there's an answer. We actually ask an attorney to help us respond to that because it's somewhat out of our area of expertise that it's not exactly immigration, but it's um, related to your status as a student. Um, and uh, essentially the, the, the short answer is it depends not every F1 international student for sure will be eligible. They will not be eligible. Most will not be eligible. But there are some that could be eligible. So um, I would recommend that you look at our question because the way it, there is some guidance on that question about how you can determine whether or not you might be eligible. And um, it has to do with your tax filing status. And I want to remind all international students that the tax filing status has been um, extended until July 15th, so you do have time. Um, but that is uh, what will determine whether or not the stimulus uh, check comes from the government. And I would just want to say one more thing. We've been hearing from colleagues at other universities as well that some students are receiving the check and they should not have received the check. So if you're concerned that that happened to you, I would recommend that you reach out to us um, to let us know or uh, essentially what we're going to tell you is um, our advice is going to be not to cash it if you think you're not eligible. Um, and, and we'll wait and see what other, what the government says about this. Um, but we have been hearing reports that students received it that should not have received it. So just be aware it's, yeah, it's governmental, um, you know, tax issues. And, and most of that we won't be able to answer, but, um, but our recommendation will almost always be to be careful. Um, in case it's requested back from our government. And that real, is a real thing. I will just tell you in the past when students have gotten checks when they weren't supposed to, they were asked for it back. So this is just a warning out there to be aware of that. Make sure you really are eligible and the information about how to do that is on our FAQ. Thank, thank you, Elizabeth. We are unfortunately running out of time and there are so many good questions here. Um, in looking through them, I think this, this one captures a lot of, of concerns. This person asks, how is UK going to handle 
graduate students' diverse concerns ranging from economic hardships, mental health, and scientific performance. And perhaps we could ask the provost to address this question. Uh, that's a, a great question. And uh, I wanna emphasize that our student support services are available to all students. Um, and including graduate students, including international students. So those services are available for all. So counseling, academic support, writing support, um, advising, and, and there are uh, there are many uh, support options through the graduate school that are continued, continuing to be offered uh, remotely. Uh, we already heard, men I already mentioned uh, Big Blue Pantry is out there for those that, that uh, you know, are, are having issues with uh, financial, financial issues or basic needs. Uh, we have our basic needs coordinator. Again, that, that office is available for all students. Um, and I just urge you to look to learn anywhere.uky.edu for uh, information on how to achieve how to uh, access all of those services but uh, I just want to emphasize that all of those all of those supports that we offer uh, through student and academic life are intended for all students including graduate students and certainly the graduate school is is there for you um, so uh, please I'd say reach out to the graduate school in particular or, or go to learnanywhere.uky.edu for more guidance on how to get the help you need. Thank you. Um, yes, the questions are amazing. Thank you so much for um, sharing with us your thoughts, your concerns, and your worries. We are really out of time. I'm going to give the last few minutes to President Capaludo, but please know that each one of your questions will be addressed by a member of staff from the International Center or a colleague on campus who is the expert that you need to be in touch with. So thank you so much for sharing your worries. Uh, it's over to President Capaludo to make some closing remarks. So I'll end with uh, where I started. First of all, thanks to you. And next to all of our participants, our international students and community. Uh, this has been an opportunity and I thank you again for us to listen and learn and uh, to be as responsive as, you, as we can. There's certainly matters on which we will we'll need to follow up, uh, do more research and get back to you. But I wanna reiterate what Provost Blackwell has said about our support services. Uh, we are here for you and uh, we are working every day to come up with uh, more ways uh, to assist you in this difficult time. So thank you for your participation. Sue, thank you and your team and the provost uh, for organizing this. Thank you so much, President Capaludo. Thank you, Provost Blackwell. Thank you, Elizabeth and Karen. Thank you to Andrea Gills, Seth Hall, Christine stevens bears and Paulina Zarate, who have been behind the scenes helping us manage these new technologies that we're all learning um, in this world. Uh, but especially thanks to all the international students and scholars who tuned in today and took the time to share with us and your peers your concerns. And as both the president and the provost have said, we are here for you and we will make sure that you're supported through this every way we can. Um, thanks for your understanding of the forum's limitations this morning, but hope that you have found it um, informative and uh, we wish you all the best for finishing your spring semester strong and uh, being successful in your academic pursuits. Um, have a very good rest of your day. Goodbye from the University of Kentucky.